Okay, welcome to part two in our three-part video on mechanical rigging in 3ds Max. In part one, we looked at how to use the HIIK solver to rig uh, some of the parts in our landing gear structure here. Uh, and we noticed that when you use the HIIK solver, all of the joints need to be in plane because uh, the uh, IK solver for HI expects all of the uh, joint movement to be in a single plane. It's easy to set up, uh, but the single plane movement is constrained. We were, however, able to uh, use a workaround in our particular case where the joints are not exactly in plane uh, for the parts we want to move, uh, but because of the geometry relationship of the bone joints and part joints, we were able to use the HIIK solver because of the, the parallel rotation axes. In part two, in, in this video, we're going to look at uh, what to do when you can't get all the parts in the same plane uh, for the same movement. Uh, so what we have here is a wheel mount assembly. Um, I've rotated this into the vertical position We've got a push rod and our bell crank that we're familiar with. Um, normally what's going to happen is that this wheel mount assembly is going to be in this position here and it is going to rotate in the local axis in this direction. The bell crank that we have is going to be moving in this direction which is a different axis. So if we look at uh, the front side of these things, we can see that the axis is canted in relationship to the axis of the bell crank. So the wheel mount and the bell crank rotation axes are not parallel. That's going to cause uh, one problem. Another problem is that our pivot points for each of the joints are not lined up uh, in the same plane. Uh, so we're not going to be able to support uh, using a single plane of motion in this as well, not even with the, uh, the workaround that we had before. So this is a case where we need to start using the HD IK solver. And to do that, I'm going to make it a little bit easier by rotating some of these parts back into a vertical position. And so we've now prepped our, uh, our model for creating our bone structure. In the top view, we can now look at uh, creating some of those bones. We're going to do that by going to Animation, Bone Tools, Create Bones and then roughly click in the joint locations for each. So left click, drag, left click, drag, left click, drag, and right click to stop the creation. And we can get out of create bones mode now. And if we look at what we have, again, uh, like the HIIK uh, solution, we have our bone structure in place, but it's not positioned appropriately. So we're going to select the root bone, and we're going to align that with our hinge point. And so X, Y, Z on the hinge point, and we can see that it's dragged the rest of the bone structure down with us. And again, in order to align the rest of the bone structure, we're going to go to bone edit mode so that as we position each bone's pivot axis, pivot point, um, we don't affect other bones in the structure. So now we can select the second bone and align it with our socket. Okay, now for this upper bone, uh, case, the terminator bone, we don't want to align it with our socket yet. What we want to do is align it with our bolt joint, and then we're going to move that into position uh, after we get things all aligned and attached. 
So in this case we've selected the terminator bone and we're going to align it with our ball joint X, Y, and Z. Okay, so now we've got our three bones aligned perfectly with our hinge and, and joint locations. Um, the next thing to do is to create our animation IK solvers. So we're going to go back to our root bone and select it. Oh, and I should I should make uh, some observations here while I'm at it. Notice that when I created the bones in both of these cases, I've created them with a single back fin. Um, you can edit the uh, or select the back fin that you want to use. Um, sorry, here we go. By uh, editing the uh, bone fins, and you can uh, you can adjust the size of the fin. Um, and you can adjust whether or not you want other fins to show up, front fins or side fins. Um, but the choice that I've made here for a single back fin and a certain size of the, uh, the fin size, that has significant meaning to me. And we'll, we'll show why that's the case when we talk in part three about um, setting up our argument-based controllers, but suffice it to say for now that you will want to identify different kinds of bone structures. And so I'm using a single back fin bone structure to uh, to mark this as being an IK controlled bone structure. And, and we'll talk more about that later. So at this point, we've got uh, our single finned IK bone structure in place. I've got the root bone selected, and we're now going to set up our IK solver. So we select Animation IK Solvers, HD Solver, and like the HI case, we're going to drag it to the Terminator bone and select it. And we are to control the uh, granularity of the solutions. We're going to go back to our thresholds again and set it to zero. This is going to make sure that we have a smooth animation. And we need to go and do some cleanup now. When this was created, um, the, the bone structure with the IK chain in it, that IK chain uh, created some things called end effectors. And in the HD case, each bone joint gets a particular end effector that can be used to control its movement. Uh, since we're only doing a something similar to the HI case, but giving some more control in the rotation, uh, we don't have to worry about you know, too much in, in the way of end effectors at each joint, but we do need to worry about the end effector for the terminator bone. We need something that works like the end goal. Right now, uh, the terminator bone has a positional end effector created by default, and we don't want to use that. We want to use uh, an end effector that's driven uh, by a dummy that uh, we control. So we're going to delete this and then we're going to go to the top view and we're going to create our own dummy that we can drag around as our end effector. So position over the joint, create our dummy, and then we're going to align that joint with our ball joint, or align the dummy with the ball joint. And now that we have that dummy in place, properly positioned, we can now go back to our terminator bone, animation, and we're going to link our end effector for that terminator bone to that dummy. Now that we have the dummy in place and our end effector linked to that, we can go ahead and create it as a positional end effector. 
I've noticed that if you do that the other way around, if you try and, and uh, have a positional end effector in place first and then create a link to your dummy, uh, things jump around and, and get out of position. So uh, I've just learned to uh, do it in this order. If anybody has another idea, um, I'd be interested in hearing uh, about how to do this in a better way. But suffice it to say right now that uh, our dummy is going to serve the same purpose that we had uh, for the end goal in the HIIK solution. So we can drag that around. Before we do that, we want to go ahead and set up our root bone as well. Now the root bone, we want to uh, limit its rotation to this z-axis here. So we're going to go to Hierarchy, IK, and then Rotational Joints, and we're going to remove the x and y axis as being active uh, rotations. So the only thing that we leave less is the z-rotation axis. Now uh, we have the ability to control the um, rotation of our root bone. We have the ability to move that bone structure around by selecting the dummy and we can move it. So that's all looking pretty good. And the only thing left is to try and rotate this uh, wheel mount assembly bone structure into its proper alignment for the hinge that we need and to position the dummy um, and into our bell crank. Before we do that, I've noticed that if you try and rotate the bone structure directly, it doesn't work. Um, so what we're going to do is go to a top view and let's create a dummy for our root bone. And we'll align that with our hinge. All right, so now we've got that in place and we're going to select our dummy. Uh, I'm sorry, we're going to select the root bone and link that to our dummy. Now we can take our part that we're trying to control by the root bone. That didn't work. And link it. I uh, hope I can get it to link here. Get this. There we go. Link to the root bone. And that should now allow us to rotate our root bone into the right position. And we're going to do that by selecting the dummy, set up rotation mode, and get it rotated back to the right location there. Okay. So we can see that the, uh, the fin on the root bone has rotated along with uh, all of our parts with the dummy and the part itself. And we've got it now aligned so that rotation axis is in the right uh, orientation for that hinge. The last thing to do is to position our uh, ball joint into the socket. And we can do that by grabbing our dummy, our, our end effector dummy. And we're now going to align that with our socket. Oh, before I do that, I need to select our push rod and link the push rod to our second bone. All right. Now we can take the dummy and align that to the socket. And that's going to drag the bone, and since the push rod is linked to the bone, um, that's going to position our ball joint into the socket, exactly where we need it. Now, to 
keep that moving around with the bell crank, we're going to have to uh, link that uh, dummy. So let's take the, the dummy here and link it to our ball joint. All right. So what we have now is a bone structure with an HD IK solver associated with it where the root bone is constrained to rotate about the 30 degree axis or about the Z axis and the end effector for the terminator bone is linked to a dummy and that dummy is linked to our ball socket position. Our ball socket position is attached to our bell crank and the bell crank is going to be controlled by our HIIK solver uh, bone structure. So now if we want to test this um, now we can go and select our landing gear strut and see if we can rotate it and see what happens here. Oops. I did not link the dummy for our root bone. So let's do that. We're going to take the dummy for the root bone and we're going to link that to our landing gear strut. Now let's try and rotate it. All right. So we see that the HIIK solution is driving the bell crank. The bell crank is pulling on the push rod and the push rod is twisting pulling on the wheel mount assembly which is causing it to rotate um, into a position that allows it to fit within the fuselage. So that's our HDIK solution and I hope uh, you've gotten a little bit out of this video. Um, the next video will discuss how do we take an arc based controller and drive these HD and HIIK solutions. Thanks for watching.